Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In our fourth lecture uh, name the timelessness and the primitive connection, we are going to uncover a very um, interesting aspect of folk art, where sometimes we feel that folk art should be timeless in its characteristic. By the term timeless or ageless, what we basically mean is that it should not be confined to a particular time. So, when we look at the examples of folk and minor art, uh, it should not show a contemporized aesthetics. So, if it is traditionally made in a particular way, uh, it should have the same aesthetic quality throughout. But uh, when we look at folk art and we say that they are made by people and they for the people, the people are also changing and the entire civilization, the living, the habitual uh, livelihood, they are also undergoing a lot of change. So, it then remains a question that when uh, can we uh, really expect folk art to remain unchanged? We cannot. But then in some instances, we see that there are certain artworks which are undergoing a common world view and that has some common connection uh, that is global and uh, that is just a condition where we see that it can be recognized uh, from any perspective and we do not really need any thematic on or iconic connection to recognize them. And let us discuss the timelessness aspect of folk and minor art uh, and also try to understand why the tribal arts which are practiced by the tribal communities often have this characteristic which is uh, not undergoing any change and it is developing uh, style wise, but there are also elements which are getting added which are much more contemporized. So, try to assess the factor called timelessness in the context of folk and minor art in this lecture. Timelessness and primitive connection that is the topic that we are going to discuss here. New Delhi based art historian and curator Yashodhara Dalmia found link between the prehistoric cave paintings of Vimbetka, Madhya Pradesh and tribal worldly painting of Maharashtra. In her book, the painted world of the Worlies, she claimed that the Worlies carry on a tradition which dates back to 2500 or 3000 BCE. The mural paintings of Worlies are similar to those cave paintings of Vimbetka in Madhya Pradesh. Mainstream art are generally meant to fulfill aesthetical aspects not made for any utilitarian purpose. Unlike such mainstream art, folk art has ritualistic purpose besides aesthetics. Ancient art was also made for any functional purpose, not only for the sake of art. In this respect, there are similarities between primitive and folk art. A completely aesthetical purpose of art is, as we know, a rather recent concept. A contemporary aesthetical purpose for art is, as we know, a rather recent concept. It is only in the last few centuries that the aesthetics and functional have been condemned to isolated polarities needing special effort as reconciliation. This is a quote by K. G. Subramanian. So, uh, in the beginning of civilization, what we see that there had been nothing called 
utility and aesthetics they were together and connected it's only very recently that we see that we have separated aesthetics from the utilitarian objects uh, in the age of mass production so in a way when uh, the primitive communities uh, made a vase for example it's a um, pail to carry water they also decorated that particular vessel now we may always ask this question that what is the utility of this paintings the decoration that is made on the surface of it and that is not a irrelevant question in that context that if a person is struggling and walking around 6 kilometers a day to fetch a vessel full of water from a particular distance then what inspires that particular person to decorate that particular pot there must be some reason now what is the inspiration of this creative activity it can be something which is connected to a deep superstitious belief it can be a ritualistic pure ritualistic thing to uh, make certain thing more auspicious it can be something that uh, changing the context using the same object and giving it a different significance by decorating it whatever the purpose of art it was something that was uh, a practice and it still continues in different communities we still feel like doing a whole lot of thing that can be called as art devoid of any utility or any uh, particular reason for it and we still practice that for no reason and with that we express ourselves we feel good about it and the reasons are very difficult to uh, find out and the psychology the inspirations behind it is also equally difficult to decipher so it is assumed that folk artists are continuing the primitive traditions in their works even the modernist mainstream artists of the west are interested in primitive art henry moore a modern western sculptor said all art has its roots in the primitive we should also uh, get back and see how picasso uh, be having been trained in a particular renaissance aesthetics that was uh, something that he did in a very young age trained by his father uh, he tried to find out a new definition of aesthetics that led him to uh, drop in into a uh, exhibition space where the negro native artworks and the masks and other artifacts and arts were displayed and through that exhibition by experiencing the display picasso also realized that primitive aesthetics has a different definition of beauty so beauty doesn't really mean that all beauties are connected to the standard of renaissance of late 15th and 16th century and it is a realization that made the primitive art more significant in the modernist context and as we see the first cubist painting by picasso which was a abstract or semi abstract painting which is known to be the first attempt to an abstract painting what he created that is the demoiselle the avignon what we see there is he created a face there with a sculptural uh, feature that had certain resemblance with the negro sculptures of that time and that was a different definition of beauty that we got to see and that probably has started a new era so primitive art and the ageless style had its connection that influenced modernity and operated the fiber of the understanding of modernity in a different direction folk art is separated from mainstream fine art it comes under a kind of art with naive and primitive expressions but folk art cannot be called primitive in the sense of western concept of primitivism 
which was a principle of modernity largely accepted by many western modern artists unlike mainstream art it is not a kind of art with academic sophistication folk art is best identified as a distinct genre in this age of technological advancement folk artists stick to their own techniques which are primitive in nature though ready made industrial paints are available now sometimes folk painters like prehistoric cave painters make pigments from natural resources leaves rocks charcoals etc we have mentioning how the patuas made the paints and brush in nandalal bose's shilpa charcha and guru shadar dat's writing from the early 20th century these techniques and materials lack sophistication of modern paintings and resemble primitivist art so it's not the permanence of the media or the longevity of it rather the creative expression that has dominated and inspired these people to develop their contents from uh, certain other inspirations social or otherwise so uh, whatever the reason is what we see here is folk art and minor art is actually undergoing a lot of change uh, which is uh, inevitable and we must accept those changes uh, when it's taking place so primitivity is a quality or the agelessness is a quality that is highly admired at the same time that should not be fixed as a criteria and we must develop that kind of a tolerance towards the new subject matters being identified as long as the aesthetic qualities are maintained throughout we should always value the aesthetic qualities that is coming through the age old traditional values and the kind of aesthetics that is sharing a common world view but we must not forget in this context that unless there is a change uh, which is continuous and natural and that gets incorporated into the artwork it cannot leave so when we talk about tradition it's not just the past but present is also going to become past one day and uh, continuing with the same thing over and over again may not make much of a sense in that context so in our next lecture we are going to talk about the issue of this evolving character and how the purpose of ritualistic art is evolving into a propagative secular purpose in the next two lectures of our first module we are going to discuss a very intricate issue uh, the understanding has to be made clear at this point so that we get to the journey of looking thinking and appreciating the artworks in its right relevant context it's all about how the artworks have started as the ritualistic or customary practices and how they are evolving at uh, creative expressions so the evolution is all about the ritualistic to the propagative or communicative things uh, and we are trying to understand that into its right fiber we will continue with our next lecture